I'm doing is legal. This is why I believe I'll receive justice in the Howard Court. More to right, right center than the left. Oh, it is gone! He did it! He did it! It doesn't matter what your background is and where you come from. If you have dreams and you have goals, and that's all that really matters. to Charlie. The freedom of expression that the entire world could see. Our world could see. When you black, it's not a movement. It's a lifestyle. This is who we are. On even the rainiest days, she could run like the wind. Flashy outfits, flowing hair, and those freaky fingernails. Flojo was the biggest name in women's sport in the late 1980s. But there was always a but. She improved so fast, run so quick, that in an era where every mighty performance in track and field was questioned, hers were among the most suspicious. In 1984, at the Los Angeles Olympics as Florence Griffith, she won a silver medal in the 200 meters. An achievement to be sure. But she failed to win selection for the 100 meters and didn't even make the US relay team. By the end of the next Olympiad, now Florence Griffith Joyner, she was the most recognizable sportswoman in the world. Just look at her physique and how it changed from the fit but lean figure of 84 to the muscles upon muscles of Flo Jo 88. Just look at the stats. At the end of 1987, age 28, she had broken 11 seconds for the 100 meters only twice in her career. Just seven months later, she'd smashed the mark by more than half a second. In the 200 meters, she lowered her best by more than six tenths of a second. In the track sprints, these are astonishing reductions and the world wondered how. How a part-time bank clerk could take a year off running in the middle of the Olympic cycle and come back to obliterate two world records, win three Olympic gold medals, and turn track and field into a marketing gold mine. Of course, we'll never know. And whatever you believe about Flo Joe's record, she never stopped delivering an anti-drugs message. Take control of your life and stay in school so that you will be smart enough to stay off of drugs and make your dreams become reality. Thank you very much. that accusation, it hurt me, but it didn't bother me. I know that I'm a champion, I am anti-drug, I do not use drugs, I do not know anybody that does. By the time Florence Griffith Joyner had run her world record 21.34 seconds in the 200 meters to complete the Olympic sprint double in 1988, Ben Johnson had already been chucked out of Seoul. Drug cheat Johnson's disqualification from the dirtiest race in history hung over the rest of the games and immediately the whispers became roars about the legitimacy of Flo Joe's astonishing performances.
as she would do for the rest of her life. Flojo steadfastly denied any wrongdoing, politely, without rancor. With the Ben Johnson situation, I felt hurt for Ben, but we have to keep this sport clean, and I'm just glad that there are more scientific approaches to catch the athletes who are trying to cheat. That's not what the sport is all about. Flojo finished Seoul with a third goal in the four by 100 meters, and for good measure, added the four by 400 meters to her program, helping the U.S. to silver behind the world record-breaking Soviet Union team. Her haul was the best by a woman since Fanny Blankers Cohen's four goal in London, 1948. It took until 2021 for anyone to come close to Flo Joe's world records. The 100 meters rivalry between Jamaican's Elaine Thompson Hera and Shelly Ann Frazier Price has taken times for the dash close to the 10.49 seconds clocked by Flo Joe in the U.S. trials before the Seoul Games. In fact, Thompson Hera should be by now recognized as a 100 meters record holder because the odometer measuring the wind assistance for Flo Joe's time at the trials has been widely discredited as inaccurate. Registering zero, with a gust blowing at her back. Thompson Hera has also taken her 200 meters time closer to the world record. But the fact Flo Joe's times have been out of reach for more than 30 years has perhaps done more harm than good to her legacy. Also harming her legacy were comments by her USA teammate of the era, Carl Lewis. A few months after Seoul, Lewis spoke at a U.S. university and linked Flo Jo and her former coach Bob Kersey with illegal drugs, supposedly unaware that a student reporter was taping his remarks. Lewis retracted the remarks, but the damage was done. There is so much jealousy in the sport, but I didn't think I would hear anything like that from Carl Lewis. I think he is trying to slander me, Flo Jo said. Twelve months later came more damage, this time from another former teammate, Dal Robinson, who told German magazine Stern in a paid interview that he had sold Flo Jo growth hormone. Said Flo Jo, Daryl, you are a compulsive, crazy, lying lunatic. She never bothered suing Robinson. Instead, she retired and began raking in millions in endorsements and appearances. She also designed uniforms for the Indiana Pacers NBA team and made guest appearances on several sitcoms or soap operas. and with coach and husband Al Jorna, started a family, giving birth to their daughter Mary in 1990. Joyner was the 1984 triple jump gold medalist in Los Angeles. The pair married in 1987, and he had gradually taken over from Bob Kersey as their coach ahead of the Seoul Games. Joyner has always maintained that the reason Flo Jo was able to make her massive improvement in times was nothing more complicated than hard work. They preached a message of physical exercise in schools, and Flo Jo was appointed co-chair of the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. And they weren't caught up in party politics, continuing to press the flesh after a change at the White House. I had the uh, opportunity to run with the president, and my husband did also. Unfortunately, Al wasn't able to maintain um, the president's pace and dropped out and, <laughs> and took a ride in the motorcade back to the White House. How great a shape is the president? I can only say that he's in great shape, and I appreciate 
all that he's doing every day. In 1996, Griffith Joyner contemplated a comeback to competitive running, but plans were scrapped when she suffered a seizure while on a plane. On September 21, 1998, she died in her sleep at home, aged just 38. She was found to have suffocated during a severe epileptic seizure the result of a congenital vascular brain abnormality. Her death triggered more suspicion about the role drugs might have played, but an autopsy found only small amounts of two over-the-counter medications and no evidence of any drugs that might have contributed to her death. Said Al Joyner, my wife passed the ultimate drugs test. Upon her death, the chairman of the IOC Medical Commission, Prince Alexander de Marode, said Flojo had been singled out for rigorous drug testing in Seoul following rumors of steroid use. We never found anything. There should not be the slightest suspicion, he said. Of course, as her times remained unchallenged, the suspicion grew only stronger. But against the tragic backdrop of her sudden and early passing, it really doesn't matter anymore. While she was running and smiling and spreading a message about health and exercise, Flo Jo was inspiring a new generation of kids to exercise, stay healthy, and believe in themselves. And with every colorful expression of fashion from today's group of athletes, the undeniable spirit of Flo Jo lives on. It's no surprise that Nicola Adams won the first big battle of her life. Because since then, She's kind of turned being first into an art form. The British boxer with style, charisma, and a flashing smile was the first woman to win an Olympic boxing gold medal at London 2012. It's still, you know, all sinking in. I, I just can't believe what I've, what I've achieved it today. You know, it's, it's a, definitely a childhood dream come true. She was the first woman to successfully defend an Olympic boxing gold medal at Rio 2016. Um, when I was growing up, I, I didn't have an Olympic champion to, to look up to as a, as a female, so now, now they have one, a double Olympic champion at that as well. In between those two firsts, she was the first woman to win a Commonwealth Games boxing gold medal in 2014 and also the first at the inaugural European Games of 2015. And the first openly LGBT person to win any of the above. And the first woman in the history of the hit UK show, Strictly Come Dancing, to perform with another woman. It's a, it's a small, small community, the LGBT community, and I think it's nice that um, we're able to represent um, athletes in the LGBT community, and I, I think we're, we're all doing so much for, for sports and, and outside sports as well. But of course, none of these history-making performances were her first big battle. No, that came at the age of four, when she stepped between her abusive father and her defenseless mother, brandishing a plastic sword, shaming him to relent. Several years later, her mother, by then single again, took her along to her gym class because her babysitter had canceled. There was a kid's boxing class running at the same time. Adams had a try and loved it. She was 13 when England boxing removed a century-old ban on women competing. 
She immediately had her first fight and won, but then didn't step into the ring again for four years. There were simply no girls to fight. Gradually, women's boxing grew in number, and Adams was the first woman to box for England internationally. By London, 2012, she was 29, and defeated the reigning world champion, Rin Can Can, in the flyweight gold medal match. As the lowest weight division, hers was the first gold medal decided. The fighter from a broken home in Leeds received an MBE from the Queen after the London Games. And it was upgraded to an OBE after Rio. But as honor piled upon accolade, Adams retained a modesty and gratitude for how far she'd come. Like when she was chosen to carry the Team GB flag in Baku. Yeah, oh, my mum's absolutely overwhelmed with joy. She's she's so proud of me. She keeps she keeps messaging me and ringing me and saying how proud she is. So um, I know I've made everybody, all my friends and family, um, back home really really happy. And I'm I'm honoured myself. It's it's an amazing opportunity. It's once in a lifetime thing, you know. Gold medal number two in Rio was enough for Adams in the amateur field. With such a strong resume behind her. The next step was to dip into the, let's face it, sexist world of professional women's boxing. Five fights and five wins later, she was a world champion, winning the WBO flyweight belt. Her first defense in September 2019 was at Royal Albert Hall the first women's boxing match at Britain's most iconic venue. Adams retained her title with a draw against Maria Salinas, despite being poked in the eye in the first round and seeing double for the rest of the fight. Soon after, Adams was told she had torn the pupil in her eye and that if she continued to fight, she could lose her vision permanently. So she quit. Adams showed from her first battle at four that she was a champion for others, and she retired a champion. Her impact as a role model as strong as ever. At the Tokyo 2020 Olympics in 2021, Great Britain's Lauren Price cited the inspiration of Nicola Adams as she fought her way to gold. It's nice for me and just to be able to inspire the next generation and to think that I've been able to um, inspire someone to go on to win a, a gold medal at Tokyo. I mean, wow, I was absolutely blown, blown away. I'm always thinking about um, the next future girl and it's just, I guess, then when I sit back and get to see what I have done and see um, the next generation coming through, I think that's what it's all about. You take one step so that they can push it even further the next time. The Say Hey Kid, Willie Mays, was the ultimate five-tool player. He could catch, throw, hit for power, hit for average, and he had speed between the bases. He won the 1954 World Series with the New York Giants, his catch in game one, one of the most famous plays in history. A 302 hitter with 660 home runs, Mays was a two-time MVP and 24-time All-Star. He also won 12 gold gloves, the most by an outfielder, and would have won more had it been awarded before 1957. Willie Mays was the greatest all-round player in baseball history. Even next to legends of women's sport, 
like Mia Hamm and Lindsey Vaughn, Lisa Leslie tends to stand out. Six foot five inch Leslie was a cornerstone of the inaugural WNBA draft in 1997. When her number nine jersey was retired by the Los Angeles Sparks 12 years later, she held the league record for points and rebounds. And to much acclaim, she was the first athlete in the competition to execute a dunk. Her national team career included four Olympic gold medals, and she still holds record hauls of points, rebounds, and blocks at the games. Leslie's accomplishments stand alone, but their impact is arguably more significant. Her performances inspired the next wave of WNBA stars, cementing the competition as a fixture in U.S. sport. Suddenly they saw players like Lisa Leslie and Cheryl Swoops and Sue Bird uh, to look up to as role models. Today, these women and women across the WNBA uh, are setting their own outstanding example for girls who are growing up today. At the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, Leslie was a 36-year-old veteran and mother to newborn Lauren. Many of her teammates, like Candace Parker and Sylvia Fowles, were only just out of college. Um, it's kind of cool, except when they think of me as a mom, I guess, <laughs> then I really feel over there like, I grew up watching you. And it's amazing because these are the players that we play for. Honestly, we wanted our game to evolve, for the players to have the WNBA as their goal and to see us as Olympians and want to be like us. And those players have arrived. I'm just still playing with them now. Alongside basketball, Leslie established herself in the media branching out from sport into entertainment. She now wants more female voices following her from the court into broadcasting. Girls just continue to have the opportunity to uh, not just play sports, but be more in front of the camera, talking about sports, having more of a place uh, in the sports world from the media perspective. One of Leslie's highest profile projects combined her careers on court and in front of the camera when she played the role of Betty Lou in the comedy movie, Uncle Drew. Other cast members included Reggie Miller, Kyrie Irving, and Shaquille O'Neal. Well, we had so much fun on set, and this is the thing, when you play basketball, we're used to focusing, you know, when it's game time. But in acting, it's like, hurry up and wait. You know, you're on for a minute, and then you gotta wait because the cameras have to shift all around. So we really entertained ourselves, whether we were dancing and making dance videos on the side, or playing basketball, or, or Betty Lou simply beating all the guys in horse. But for all the fun in her life, there's a much more serious side to Lisa Leslie. Supporting Colin Kaepernick and the Black Lives Matter movement. In 2020, she penned an open letter entitled Dear America, on the Players' Tribune website. An injustice to one race is an injustice to all races. We are all Americans, she wrote. Activist, mother, Olympian, WNBA record holder, and a Hollywood superstar to boot. Lisa Leslie is a legend who stands tall. 